Hello friends, I'm here today to tell you about a book that is in the nonfiction section. It's called The Loch Ness Monster. And it's about something that happens in Scotland. There's a monster they think exists there. Um, it's what we think of when we think of like Bigfoot. It's mysterious. Is it really there? Did it cause all the problems that everybody says it does? No one's ever really seen it but there's ideas about who it could be. Here's a drawn picture of what they think the Loch Ness Monster might look like. Here's another drawn picture. Here's a fuzzy picture. Look at that. What do you think? Is that a monster? When pictures are fuzzy, we're not sure. This monster, if he does exist, has been held responsible for all kinds of destruction that's happened in the Loch Ness. This book is in the zero zero zeros, which means it's in the general works in the nonfiction section. So if you look at the zero 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 section, you should find books like The Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, UFOs, The Bermuda Triangle, um, monster tales of Native Americans, many different books similar to this. So that's my nonfiction plug for today. I'm going to be reading a book to you called Wild About Books. You see my book? It's got all kinds of wonderful wild animals. This is by Judy Sierra. Wild About Books. It started the summer of 2002 when the Springfield librarian Molly McGrew by mistake drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let down the stairs, turned on the computer and sat in her chair. At first, all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. There's your book. By reading aloud from Good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose and a wombat, an onyx, a lemur, a lynx, eight elephant calves, and a family of stinks. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. Forsaking their niches, their nests, and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild, about library books. Choosing thin books and fat books and cat in the hat books and new books and true books and heaps of how-to books. Giraffes wanted tall books and crickets craved small books, while go geckos could only read stick-to-the-wall books. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their requests, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Raccoons read alone and baboons read in bunches and llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. Look at that. Hyenas shared jokes with red-bellied snakes and they howled and they hissed till their funny bones ached. A tree kangaroo who adored Nancy Drew began solving mysteries right there at the zoo, such as, why were the bandicoots books overdue? Gently, Molly taught lessons in treating books right for the boa constrictor squeezed Crichter too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up the good night moon with their paws. Giant termites devoured the Wizard of Oz. Wow, they do not know how to treat library books. Are we mean to our library books and squeeze them too tight? Or maybe give them to little baby brothers or sisters that would eat them? Ooh. And really, do we put dirty paws on our books? We should probably wash our hands before we touch a book, right? Mm -hmm. And bears love, bears' love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pictures right off the pages. 
Can you imagine that? Wow. Poor bears. Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that the others decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails, penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines wrote with their very own quills. Very interesting. Isn't that cool? At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpions gave each a stinging review. Pretentious stinks. Boring. Redundant. As the cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night to the Barbary Eight. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell. Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulitzer Prize. It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, historic and new, to build a branch library right there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check out the books. We can put them on shelves. And they did. And they do up to this very day. Three cheers for Zubre. Hip, hip. Hooray! When you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They are snug in their niches, their nests, and their nooks, going wild, simply wild, over wonderful books. What do you think? Was that a good one or not? I liked it. Now I wanted to show you this book was dedicated to Dr. Seuss. This book is for one of our favorite doctors, artist, poet, fun concocter, Theodore Seuss Geisel, 1904 to 1991. Isn't that sweet? So what did you think of this book? Did you learn about good ways to treat your library book when you came here? Hopefully you were able to get um, the coloring sheet I sent home for you. Enjoy it. You don't have to send it back. Just enjoy it. Thank you. Have a good day.